In this episode of Cranes 101, we're gonna take a look at variable frequency drives and how they change the entire overhead crane game. What's up guys, Devin here from Mozilla Companies and today we're doing a deep dive into variable frequency drives. In this video, we'll cover what a VFD is and how it's used, what are the components that make it up and what kind of problems can it solve, and then we'll wrap up by talking about the importance of transparency between you and the operators as they transition or start over with their new variable frequency drive system. To help me tell this story, I reached out to John Schaefer, whose job title is kind of a mouthful. So he's a manufacturer rep for Magnatech Material Handling. And he joined me via teleconference to really just start by unpacking what a variable frequency drive does and why that became so popular. Well, a variable frequency drive, or VFD, came out really in the late 80s and early 90s. And the reason that they came out and became so popular is because their costs came down, they became cost efficient. What they do for us, just like the uh, name sounds or says, variable frequency drive, we're able to vary the frequency to an AC motor. And by varying the frequency, we're able to get motor control out of it. When I'm saying motor control, be able to adjust the speeds, be able to adjust acceleration and deceleration ramps. So, as John said, a VFD system really just gives you control over whatever you apply it to. Hoist or trolley, bridge or hook, it really depends on what you want to control. And before that, you were just at the mercy of your motor. Single speed, two speed, it really just depends on what you had or the complexity of the crane. But how much did the VFD system really change the way that you operated? Once the variable frequency drive came in, now we were able to give you performance similar to almost DC, but with just a single speed squirrel cage motor. So single speed squirrel cage motor, simplest motor on the market um, or available. And by using a variable frequency drive, we can control how fast the motor accelerates, how fast it decelerates, and we can also control speed points. So sounds like an awesome piece of tech, but how exactly does the VFD system work? What a variable frequency drive does is it, it creates a sinusoidal wave by varying the voltage and frequency to trick an AC motor to think it's at its synchronous speed even when it's not. The one that really got the thing on the map was a minimizing brake wear. Let's say your contact, your control trolley, right? The guy's beating the button, bang, 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 trying to get motor control out of it, right? Well, every time he does that, when he lets go of the button, use a mechanical brake to stop the motion. Eventually, the thing wears out. You put in some application where the guy's plugging a lot. He might only get months, maybe even weeks out of the brake, and the brake's wearing out. So for me, having a new system in place that helps to save my brakes and keep my maintenance team from having to replace it all the time is pretty valuable. But there had to be some other perks, right? We also have accelerated or uh, adjustable XL and decel times. So you could set, uh, let's say your bridge is 300 feet per minute. You might want that to accelerate in five or six seconds where your trolley might be 100 feet per minute. You might want to accelerate that in three seconds. You know, one of the examples we often talk about is NASA loading space shuttles or uh, satellites into the space shuttle. That crane might do, you know, I don't know, 120 feet per minute on the bridge. But when they got a satellite on there, they're in no hurry. They don't care if it takes all day to get that satellite into that space shuttle. So now that we know what a VFD system is, how it works and the problems that it can solve, I wanted to know about the transition for operators from an old system to a new VFD system. So if it's so easy, it's gotta be a breeze, right? That, if there is a disadvantage, that is probably it. In the old days, they were able to abuse the controls. They were able to get the crane to kind of, well, do whatever they want right now. The shortfall is now the operator says, hey, I'm used to stopping at 300 feet in three feet. Now it takes me eight or 10. So there is a learning curve with operators. Um, the biggest problem I've had in my experience is working with operators that have been doing this for 30 years and expected to operate one way and then it changes. Now, I'm the type of guy that likes complete control over the systems that he uses. I have my keyboard mapped out the way I want it. I have my cell phone laid out the way I want the apps to go. And I wonder that when it comes to variable frequency drives, what control does an operator have? Because if I was an operator, I would want to do the same thing to get it dialed in exactly how I want it. So I asked John, what control does an operator have to get their VFT systems dialed in exactly the way that they want? It's all there. You know what I mean? It, the keypad's there, the book's there, it's all online. If they wanted to figure it out, they could. 
I've rarely seen, I think I've only watched, an operator actually getting up there and changing things. The last thing I wanted John to explain to me was when a VFD system will work the best, because I've been working in this industry long enough to know that not everything works for every application. And I was actually pretty surprised to find out the sheer range of when a VFD system can work and work great. First, it only made sense to do it on high speed class D and E bridges or, or this and that. Now it's, you know, you're buying a five ton Shaw box and it's got a little tiny inverter on the trolley. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just all the time now. And manufacturers now are even using it to match speed requirements rather than change a gearbox sets. Hopefully we were able to give you a better understanding of how variable frequency drives work. And the cool thing is you don't have to stop here with this video. If you wanna hear the full conversations that John, myself, and our content manager, Mike Close had, if you have iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, or Stitcher, all you gotta do is go to your favorite one and search Mozilla Companies and look up our Variable Frequency Drives podcast. You'll hear the full episode, the entire conversation without any edits whatsoever to learn as much as you possibly can. If you like this video, don't hesitate to check out the rest of our Cranes 101 series or the Reagan Professor as well. There's a ton of content there. We're gonna make a whole bunch more this year. In addition to that, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. And there's a little notification bell that you can ding, so anytime I upload a video, you see it first. At Mozilla Companies, we have a team of highly trained lifting specialists who want nothing more than to meet with you and talk about your next lifting project and what the best application could be. Maybe it's a variable frequency drives, maybe it's not. But the best thing you can do, especially if you're not sure, is to reach out to one of our lifting specialists who would be happy to help you however they can. And hey, if you're not sure what kind of overhead crane you need, why don't you learn everything you can about it? If you click the link above, it'll take you to a resource that we developed just for you. Download the free overhead cranes ebook. It's overhead cranes from top to bottom. It doesn't cost you anything whatsoever. Our goal, as always, is just to make sure that you are as trained as possible before you buy anything at all. For all of us at Mozilla Companies, I'm Devin McCarty. Thank you for watching.